Assalamualaikum and hi. I hope everyone is doing great. As you can see, we are still on the same chapter, which is photosynthesis. So far, we have looked at the leaf structure, which also brought you to microscopic structure of chloroplast, and as well as defining the photosynthesis process. And I also believe that in previous video, you have learned about one of the main stage in photosynthesis, which is light reaction. So in this video, I will explain the subsequent process, which is dark reaction, or also known as Kelvin cycle, or some may refer it as light independent reaction. Kelvin cycle is also known as dark reaction or light independent reaction. So as the name suggests, the reaction is not directly driven by the light. And this reaction takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast where the sugar will be finally synthesized with the aid of ATP and NADPH. These two intermediate molecules are synthesized in the light reaction. So you may refer to the next slide to recall the location of this process. The real product of Kelvin cycle is actually not glucose but it is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or in short we call it G3P. And please remember that the cycle needs to take place three times to complete one reaction in order to produce one G3P. The Kelvin cycle reactions can be divided into four stages, which are carbon fixation, reduction, regeneration of carbon dioxide acceptor, and finally product synthesis. This slide is an overview structure of a chloroplast where we can locate the stroma and thylakoid. So the green stack here is granum, consists of individual thylakoid stacked together. Here is a general diagram of the Kelvin cycle. As I've mentioned earlier, it has four stages, which are carbon fixation, reduction, regeneration of carbon dioxide acceptor, and product synthesis. The first stage of the Kelvin cycle is a process called carbon fixation. In this process, the Kelvin cycle incorporates carbon from carbon dioxide into an organic molecule called RUBP. This reaction occurs with the aid of an enzyme called Rubisco. The reaction instantly makes a 6 carbon compound that will split into two molecules of a 3 carbon compound, 3 phosphoglyceric acid or 3 PGA. The second stage of the Kelvin cycle is reduction stage. This stage requires ATP and NADPH which come from the light reaction previously. This process will convert 3PGA into a 3-carbon sugar known as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P. So what happened in this step is first, each molecule of 3PGA will receive a phosphate group from ATP and then this will turn the molecule into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Next, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate molecules are reduced. That means this molecule will gain electron. So each of these molecules will receive electron from an ADPH while at the same time it will lose one of its phosphate group. 
So in the end, it will turn into 3 carbon sugar called glyceraldehyde triphosphate or G3P. To keep the Kelvin cycle running, the process regenerates ADP and NADP+, thus providing the substrate needed for the light-dependent reaction. The third stage in the Kelvin cycle is the regeneration or reformation of RUBP. In this stage, some of the G3P molecules will exit the cycle and go towards the glucose synthesis, while others must be recycled to regenerate the RUBP. As you can see here, the regeneration of RUBP requires another 3 ATP molecules. So the last stage of the Kelvin cycle is product synthesis. As I said earlier, to complete the process, the cycle must take place three times, fixing three molecules of carbon dioxide. When three carbon dioxide molecules enter the cycle, so six G3P molecules are made. One molecule of G3P will exit the cycle and will be used to make glucose or any other organic compound, while other five will be recycled to regenerate three molecules of RUBP. Okay, let's summarize the quantities of molecules that enter and exit the Kelvin cycle as one of G3P molecule is made. For a complete process of Kelvin cycle, it needs to turn three times. So the process needs three carbon dioxide molecules that will combine with three RUBP molecules, making six molecules of G3P. And then one of this G3P molecule will exit the cycle and goes toward making glucose while other five of these G3P molecules will be recycled to regenerate three RUBP molecules. This process also needs nine ATP, which six are used in the fixation step while another three during the regeneration steps. And it also needs NADPH, 6 molecule of them. This is during the reduction step. Since one G3P contains 3 carbon atoms, so it needs 2 molecule of G3Ps to produce 1 molecule of glucose. Thus, the cycle needs to turn 6 times. So it needs 6 carbon dioxide molecules, 18 ATPs and 12 NADPH to produce one molecule of glucose. We have finished on the Kelvin cycle or duct reaction. Now let's have a look at how these two processes, light reaction and duct reaction, uh, vary from each other. As you can see here in the diagram, light reactions takes place in the thylakoid membranes while dark reaction or Kelvin cycle occur in the stroma. Light reaction is a photochemical phase because it converts light energy into chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH, while Kelvin cycle or dark reaction is a biochemical phase because it uses ATP and NADPH to produce sugar. Additionally, in light reaction, we can see water molecules being split into hydrogen and oxygen, and this oxygen is being released to the atmosphere. While in dark reaction, where the glucose is produced, we can see that carbon dioxide is utilized in the dark reaction. 
another difference between light reaction and dark reaction is the end products so the end products for light reaction are ATP and NADPH while in dark reaction or Kelvin cycle the end product is glucose so ATP and NADPH help in the formation of glucose You may also refer to this slide to see the difference between light reaction and dark reaction.